teachers of Reddit. What is the most elaborate interesting way a student has tried to cheat in an exam? My grandfather taught high school history way back in the day, and he had a student who had replaced the face of his watch with a handwritten scroll, detailing all of American history in what I imagine was size 5 font. When he turned his watch to wind it, the scroll cycled through. He got caught, but almost got off for creativity. Almost. And there's people out there who write down stuff on pieces of paper or on their hands and don't get caught. I once cheated on a math exam in what I thought was a novel way. I thought I was prepared for the test, but during the exam I got the sickening feeling that I was in over my head. The exams were not collected in any sort of organized way. Everyone brought their paper up, and then went back to their desk to pack their things. I merely packed my exam into my backpack, went to the library and worked on the problems enough to get a decent grade. Then, after hours I put the exam on my teacher's desk with an unsigned note indicating that the paper had been found on the floor near the teacher's desk. The teacher came up to me two days later and said that he had almost lost my exam and that someone had returned it to him. To be honest, I really disliked doing it, and it is the only case of actual cheating I remember from elementary through post-secondary education. Still, it was a little bit of a rush knowing that it worked. I taught basic ASL finger spelling to my L students, helped when they needed assistance spelling, and found out they were using it to cheat on multiple choice tests in other classes. Wasn't sure whether to be upset or proud. Not a teacher but have seen some interesting ones. Invisible ink on all arms and other skin exposed areas containing notes etc. Also bring a UV pen and you have yourself some nice invisible notes. The uni countered this by installing UV lights in the exam halls. Printing notes onto tiny transparencies, as the exam desks were dark colored you couldn't see these notes. You could just hide them in plain sight. To view the notes move the transparency onto the exam paper and use the white background. I wonder who the unlucky guy was who got caught when they first put in the lights. You walk in the class and you stick out like a glowing sore thumb. Not a teacher, this is just what I did in middle school. I would have a sheet of paper with all necessary answers on it. Sit at my desk, and copy the info from the sheet to the top of the desk with a mechanical pencil. I would then cover the answers with sheets of blank notebook paper that I needed for the test. Get test. Copy answers that are already on desk onto paper. Rub hand over graphite. Graphite smudges away disappears. Perfect test. Also I once got a teacher's edition of a math book. That year was way too easy. At the start of the year, everyone was given a piece of paper maybe A2 in size, that would fold down to the size of a matchbox. On it was everything you needed to know about maths, condensed into equations, examples and diagrams. Of course, being teenagers, most people lost them almost instantly and didn't really care. When exam time came around, there was one person who no one thought would pass. He never turned up to class and couldn't care less about maths. In the middle of the exam, he just takes out the paper and unfolds it to check the relevant information. Our exam hall was pretty big, but the desks were annoyingly small. It wouldn't have been hard for an invigilator to notice he had more paper than he should have, but no one did anything, partly due to the shock that he could even think to try it, and not wanting to be that guy. My chem teacher in high school was pretty well liked. He was the swim coach, knew everyone and even hosted a Pokemon club sometimes. He was liked by everyone and was pretty open with his students. Anyway during class he would often mess with people or make fun of them. One of the weird things he'd do was to grab maybe a chip out of the bag of chips you had just opened. Anyway so test day comes along for a class of his right after snack. He passes out the tests and then begins to walk around looking for anything suspicious. Well he spotted a bag of Chex Mix on a kid's desk and for some odd reason he thought he'd grab some for himself. He reaches into this bag of Chex Mix only to discover that instead of delicious Chex Mix, he was in fact holding tiny rolled up pieces of paper with the answers to the test on them. The owner of the Chex Mix bag then failed Chem. He should have disguised them as boring potato chips. This wasn't an exam, but my French students were putting on a play that had to be memorized. One of my students had written his lines on props and furniture, and read them as he moved around the stage. In my philosophy class during freshman year, at the end of every exam, 
We were given one question and had write an in-class essay. I am a slow, methodical writer and writing an in-class essay is just a horrible experience altogether. Luckily, the professor gave us the six possible questions a week before the exam so that we could study them. After the first exam I noticed that he let us use our own personal notebook paper to write the essay part. So before the next exam I wrote out an essay for all six questions. When all was said and done, I learned more from that class than probably the non-cheaters. I had a govd class. For the final we were to write an essay on one of two topics we were given in advance. We were allowed to bring one sheet of notes for the exam. I asked the professor to clarify any further rules. None. Typed up both essays. 8 points font. Came to my exam and copied my note paper to the test booklet. In my exams you were allowed to take in blank refill paper to make notes etc. I would make notes beforehand. Pushing hard with the pen so it would go through to the next page. I'd do this somewhere in the middle of the pad so it wasn't noticeable. I passed me some goddamn exams. Hum. Genius. In my town. We were allowed to test out of certain subjects in high school. Basically, like a month before school started, you could take an exam and whatever your grade was on that exam was the grade you received for the class that year. My friend was taking the US history test one year and it had two parts, multiple choice and essay. Everything was stapled together in one packet and the essay questions were on a single page in the back, with space to write on the paper itself. My friend felt confident in the multiple choice, but had no idea how to answer the essays. So he ate them. Straight up. Throughout the multiple choice part, he ripped off tiny bits of the last page and ate them one by one. So that by the time he was done, the entire back page was gone. And with it, the essays. He turned the test in and left. About two weeks later, the board of education called him up. Said there had been an error and the test was missing part of the questions. Since there was no time to retake the test, he got 100% on the essay part and got an A for the course. FAQs. The proctor did not design the test, so he didn't know what to check for when my friend turned it in. Proctor was in the room the whole time. TL. DR. My friend ate part of his exam and received full credit for doing so. I did a law degree. Now I'm not saying I did this wink wink boo it. Some of the exams allowed you to take statute books in. They were never much help but if you were a dab hand at Adobe and design or some such software you could just cut out 30 or so pages and replace them with pre-prepared essays and case explanations and copy the exact style of the book. Invigilators would look at the book and would never notice a thing. I went to a top 10 in the world university for law and yes there are people I know who have gotten 100k plus jobs because they cheated in very smart ways to get the best grades. Cheating at top universities is an endemic problem probably 25% of the year cheated in a big way. This wasn't ingenious or anything, but in HS they used to make us remove the little paper slips that were inside our TI-83's cover plate thing to discourage notes cheating. I would write in pencil on the actual inside of the cover itself. With the right angle, the lead of the pencil would reflect the light from overhead and you could see notes formulas. <laughs> Upvoted for devious laughter. My chemistry class had a very elaborate plan. In a class of around 20 students around 8 of us were very good friends. We would all try and answer as much of the test before we started cheating. 1. Create a group text thread and ask a question. 2. Then one friend waits almost 10 minutes and goes to the bathroom at that time. With full access to the internet and around 5 minutes to answer the questions to their best ability would text the answers. 3 again another friend would go to the bathroom and answer as many as possible. 4. So on and so forth. 5. Works like a charm teacher never doubted a thing. All of us got different scores for the most part and since the group was so large cheating never seemed like a possible reason as to why we all got good grades. We must have done this at least 10 times throughout the year. Never got caught. We aren't allowed to leave the room during exams in any of my classes and if a cell phone is seen out during exams you get an automatic zero. My school is super anti-cheating and you can get in trouble for small things like forgetting to cite a picture in a presentation. 
I knew someone that took the label off of a coke bottle, and on photoshop made another label with the same format, but test material written in the nutrition facts and other text. He bought an almost similar looking paper to the plastic label, and presto, probably would have been less effort just to study. You're exactly right. When I was in college, I would type answers, formulas, definitions, etc into my TI-84 and save them in a program so that I could recall them during the exam. By the time I finished manually entering that into the calculator, I actually knew it well enough to usually not even need to look at it during the exam. Not an exam, but college papers. So my dad had to write 5 essays for 5 different classes he was taking, and he had to do this all while working. Somehow, he managed to write them all on the same topic. The first essay was due way before the others, and he used the edits and comments in for the essays for his other classes. Each of the papers was 80% the same stuff, and he aced all of them. Would never fly at my university. For a Spanish test I recorded myself speaking the exam dialogue I was to have with a teaching lady. On test day I connected my iPod through my hoodie and into my ear hole and let my hippie hair cover the black wire. I paused and played the track to keep up with the dialogue. Worked for me, but I still don't know Spanish so I probably should have just studied. Back in bio in high school, we were allowed one 3x5 nautical with notes, front and back. To use on each test. Most people would write insanely small, but my buddy, we'll call him Tim, one day had a great idea on how to get double the note space. His dad worked as an optical engineer, so he had access to colored light filters usually used with lasers to block certain wavelengths but not others. Tim went to a few art shops, found the right shade of blue and red, and wrote over the same space in different colors. He showed up to the test with a completely illegible nauticard, got it okayed by the teacher, and pulled out his filters. It worked for the most part, but it gave him the worst headache trying to decipher what he had written because the fluorescent lights were messing with how the light came through his filters. Somehow he still got a perfect score on the test, but only after explaining that he wasn't cheating and showing the teacher that there were no answers on the note card. That method has since been banned by the teacher. A simpler way to do this is to write in red ink, then different notes in blue ink over top of it. Bring in old school 3D glasses and close either the red or the blue eye to see the right notes. This is not about cheating on tests, but cheating in submitted papers. But I'll leave it here. In college, we had a teacher who, an old woman, while we were filling out a test, checked if the recently submitted papers contained any cheating, the control plus V from the internet kind. She would call out everyone by name while reading their paper and pick out a not commonly used word in it and ask, Stephen, what does coherent mean? And if Stephen did not know it, then it was evidence in her eyes that Stephen copied that entire paragraph from the internet. Another time, we could observe how she does this when the person who submitted the paper is not present. We went to this woman's office for some information on something, and just as we sit down, someone brought in a late paper. She motioned us to wait, looked into the paper, picked out a paragraph, and proceeded to type the entire paragraph into Google. If there was a hit, that would mean proof that that entire paragraph was copied from the net. Holy frick that irks me, my dean did that was something I had written. And I said, the search term's too long, it's cut out words. He replied, yes, but you copied the keywords. No crap there are the same keywords. This isn't really cheating, but I used to be crazy about my Latin tests in Latin 101. I would always make myself a pre-test before the test just to check myself. After a while a few of my friends in the class wanted them to. It got to the point where every day before a test and the teacher showed up. I was passing out my pre-test to the entire class. Grades went up. Back in the olden days we had one oral book report in 10th grade English late 80s. You went to the front of the class, sat with the teacher and gave her your book. The rest of the class is supposed to be doing other work. She flips through the book, reads a short passage and then asks you about it. If you read the book, you could easily pass. One ill-prepared classmate told us before class he needed a book. One guy produced a book. Five of us were like, oh yeah, that's a great book I read that one. Me too. Yeah me too. Remember the part when such and such did such and such. Oh yeah and then such and such happened and then he did something. Yeah and then they all went to blah blah blah. 
The five of us made up a whole story for the book in 30 seconds. Classmate was stoked. Hilarity ensued when questioned by the teacher. She would ask him something from the book and he would recite the bulls we gave him. The look on our teacher's face was priceless as you could almost read her mind wondering what in the heck he was talking about. After at least two people fell out their desks laughing, she finally made him admit he had not read the book and received an F. Failing grade, we told him the book was about a football player that beat his girlfriend in high school. The book was actually Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. The horror. The horror. I've never tried this, but I've always thought that a clever way to cheat would be to unwrap a piece of a gum, record the information on the inside of the wrapper, and then to rewrap it. Nor, write it on the gum itself so that after you use the information, you can dispose of the evidence. Just get old school gum that's nice and wide, in the foil wrappers, and a food marker. Not a teacher, but I had a teacher in a scholarship prep activity tell me that a student once used a watch, which once tapped, displayed the test answers entered by a USB port on the side of the watch. It's called an iPod Nano. During one of my CCNA classes that I was forced to take, I telneted into my friend's router and completely programmed his router for him. The teacher had no idea I was doing it because I purposely made stupid mistakes. My friend isn't too bright. Tell me how to do this please advise tanks. Not a teacher but I've got a story as well. In 7th grade during the last test of primary school, which was super important, the boy decided to copy my name on both his answer and question sheets. He failed. A friend of mine always had the most creative ways of cheating. I remember one that wasn't very creative, but I was blown away by how well it worked. In our freshman world history class we had a test on the geography of Africa. Here's a blank map. Name the countries. Pretty standard. So he just took a picture of a map of Africa and put it on his iPod touch. When test time came around, the teacher let everyone listen to their MP3 players. So he just whips the iPod out, places it on the desk in front of him, puts his headphones in, pulls up the picture of the map, and starts copying. I sat to his right. So I started copying his test. This wouldn't be anything special if he wasn't sitting 3 feet to the teacher's right for the entire test. I was blown away that she didn't notice. But she was one of the least observant or caring teachers that seemed to work at the school. Comma the teacher let everyone listen to their mp3 players. A sure way to let everyone cheat. My friend's mom was a nutter and she would freak out if my friend got anything below an A in math. Unfortunately my friend wasn't particularly good in math. Every semester we would doctor her report card. This was done by finding something with the exact font where A was printed correctly. Then we would place this extremely carefully onto her report card and do a photocopy. It pretty much came out pristine every time. Her mom could never tell the difference. I used to buy Starbucks in the morning before class and write equations and answer on the cup. I could leave it on my desk and it the thing was, the pencil would blend in with the brown paper sleeve so you couldn't tell from far away. I would write in on the actual cup, then cover it up with the sleeve. Took screen printing as an elective my junior and senior year. I started a very small but lucrative business making class and club shirts with formulas and answers printed on the back hidden into the text. Not a teacher, but there was a girl in my class who always had those acrylic nails that extended like an inch from the tip of her finger. She was known for being really dim-witted so we were all surprised when she passed AP Physics with a 97% on the final exam. Turns out she had transcribed a cheat sheet onto the underside of her nails in pencil and when she was done with one set of answers, she'd just wipe them off. Was never caught, as far as I know. I had a friend who claimed they were diabetic and asked to keep a Hershey bar on the desk while they were taking an exam in case their blood sugar dropped. The Hershey bar had formulas etched on the back of the chocolate bar and was gradually eaten when the formulas were no longer needed. I'm a pirapro right now in a fairly ghetto school so this is about how elaborate their cheating is. Student A. Marquavius. What's number 5? Dog. Student B. C. Me. Why are you cheating? Student A, Marvin, you better get the frick up out my face. Tell us more. I have a fancy calculator. I type notes on my computer, complete with color images and diagrams, 
and upload them to my calculator via USB. This is a story my dad told me about his work colleague invigilating an exam. All the students were writing their answers, and this colleague was doing the walk up and down the rows, checking IDs and names of the students. There were a lot of Asian students, I think this was a university medical exam. He got to her desk, and examined the id. He detected something wrong, and went to the top of the room, where the teacher of the exam module happened to be. Teachers don't anyways turn up to invigilate. The teacher confirmed the suspicion. The student taking the exam was doing so for another student, and had brought in the other student's id. Apparently this happens quite frequently, because the invigilators can't differentiate between Asian students. My scout leader told me he used Morse code during exams, by typing on the table with a pen. A boy scout only cheating system. I had a student scan his exam then remove all of his answers and copy the correct solutions onto it. His score would have gone from a D plus to a perfect score had he pulled one over on me. The first issue arose when he brought it to me claiming I never graded his exam so I asked him to do the first problem and he couldn't do it. Then I asked about another and another. He did poorly so I dropped him to an F as punishment for being a dickhead. I'm not a teacher. But my brother found out how to break into his classroom after school. He broke in, somehow gained access to the teacher's computer. They probably just didn't have a password, and changed his grade on previous tests. After they hand it back to you, they have no idea what grade you originally got. I had one of his teachers in high school and started talking about what my brother was doing after high school. I told them that he was getting his degree in civil engineering. The teacher said he was surprised because he was almost certain that my brother would end up in prison for something. He has always been the kind of person that tries to find a way to cheat the system. Last year in one of my classes we had to memorize a page of text and write it down by memory for an in-class exam. I found out that we would be using our own notebook so the day before I copied the text on the piece of paper that was on top of the paper I would be writing on for the exam so it left imprints that I would just copy over during the exam. Got an A. That is the dumbest freaking test I've ever heard of. In English class senior year of high school, our 75 year old bat tag of a teacher could no longer walk so she had to use a wheelchair. Each week we had a vocab test, she would roll around the room looking for people with cheat slips up their sleeve, a common utility at the time. However, little did she know that she had a vocab book duct taped to the back of her wheelchair. Every time she did a lap around the room to check if we were cheating, she, in fact, facilitated our plan. A's for the class every time. Bro, you guys are all amateurs. My high school chemistry class involved a very elaborate ring of students exchanging papers with each other based on an individual's strength in a topic. Same ring of students had a message relaying system in calculus where we strategically positioned the smart students to be immediately surrounded by the neat writers, followed by the general masses. Those with graphing calculators sat behind the tall people. I only administered one exam. I feel that they are a terrible waste of time in my subject, had no intention of using the grade, and did it only because it was mandatory for first semester TAs, and the day before the test thought I'd have a little fun with my students and dropped a fake test key on the floor. The student who picked it up had a very sly look on his face the next day, so I figured I had him. I was wrong. As near as I can tell, he copied the thing and gave it to everyone else, but had figured out that it was a plant. He got a C. Everyone else got an F. But since I'd promised to grade on a curve if people had trouble, he ended up getting what would have been a very high score. Then we had a lengthy class discussion about plagiarism. Not a teacher but, in high school a friend of mine was taking Latin. The exams could be rough and by the end of it some students stooped to cheating. He used clear tape to tape a printout section onto his legs so he could pull up his athletic shorts and read the charts for answers. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.